So is Warzone 2 and DMZ any good? We've done reviews on each of the major installments, reveals, and playable builds since the multiplayer reveal back in September, so I wanted to do one last one here for the year and give my overall impressions, feedback, and criticisms were applicable for you in one spot since so much of a large portion of the game has been out for a few days now. No lifing them both, I think I've got a solid list of pros, cons, and everything in between that I can bring to the table, but by no means is this definitive that you should take it as gospel. I just want to share some thoughts and views on it overall. If you're enjoying or disliking it, feel free to let me know down below. It's all subjective and there is no right or wrong answer. So as we go along, drop those thoughts. But if you enjoy the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ. We've still got plenty up on deck here. So if you're part of that 70% of viewers not subscribed and you'd like to join the community, I'd love to have you as we chase down 600,000 subscribers. And finally, this video is brought to you in part by my friends over at Apex Gaming PCs. Code Espresso gets you 15% off your next system as a part of their Black Friday deals. But but more on them in a bit. For now though, let's take a look at the good, bad, and everything in between in DMZ and Warzone 2. So let's start out with Warzone 2 here. Now, the more that I play it, the more that I'm kind of entirely cool with this being different from Warzone 1. If you guys were here back in September for the reveal of Modern Warfare 2 of Warzone 2, one of the things that we talked about was how different it actually was compared to the Warzone 1 experience. I'll be the first to say that I jumped the gun on that one. I passed judgment too quickly, and I'll say it again when we get to the DMZ section of this video that I did that for that as as well. I still think that that sort of argument holds weight, that the loadouts help to make the game unique and put a Call of Duty spin on the genre. It's definitely a valid response, but it also, I think, is nice that the way that we're not so dependent upon loadouts now at this point. Dare I say that that even introduces a skill gap for those who can and cannot use ground loot weapons as well. Now, I really don't know if skill base is still just trying to adjust itself to the entire player base, if more and more players are new, and so therefore you come up against some players that there is that genuine differential in skill that you see, but I've been noticing that the first few games that my squad have been playing each day, we've just been frying. Very well could be that learning curve of a brand new map, new mechanics, new strategies and all, but it is something that I've definitely noticed that in the games that we've played, you can see the varied levels of skill that you'll go up against. Now, again, whether or not we see that continue on the next couple of weeks as matchmaking ends up sort of balancing out to where they inevitably want more competitive lobbies in that regard for player retention, I'd be cool if they don't go that route, but I mean, where my squad has been right now, it's a good mix of we'll have those lobbies where we absolutely fry, but also we're fighting for our lives. It seems like it's truly random based on that player set as opposed to cherry picked as matchmaking had done before within Warzone 1. But anyways, that's something that we can get into at a later point in time. Let's talk about some pros and cons. Now across Warzone 2 and DMZ, I'm probably gonna forget plenty of things, but this is what I've got off the top of my head. For pros for Warzone 2, honestly, I'm really liking the map of Al Mazra. It's great so far, in my opinion. Plenty of points of interest that I definitely think are worth landing at. There's very few that I've come across where I'm like, wow, there is no loot. I'm not dropping back here ever again. There might have been like one or two like that that I've had across the number of games that we've played so far, but really, none of them really ring out too much. Solid rotations are available either on vehicle or on foot. One thing that I really like is that Geo, yes, there's still spots that it does suck, but like you can actually scale the mountainsides of Observatory with relative ease. That's something that in Caldera, in Verdansk, that would be unheard of. So I'm happy with how that has worked out so far. The gunplay feels pretty good, and right now, because we are so early on, there is still a pretty healthy air quote meta of weapons that you can end up using. Basically, everything is still usable to some degree. Now, there's definitely some classifications of weapons that I'd kind of avoid, and we'll talk about that in a video either later here tonight or tomorrow, where we're talking about our best loadouts and tips for weaponry, but that's something we'll get to in a little bit. I'm honestly really liking some of the new features introduced as well within Warzone 2. One thing that I really love is the ability to have the zipline mechanic, but with your gun out, because if you guys remembered in Warzone 1, that zipline mechanic when it was introduced, even until where we were up until the last couple of days whenever Warzone was going offline, you were entirely vulnerable if you took a zipline. You were, of course, able to traverse vertically with relative ease, but when you were getting to the top or the bottom of wherever you were, you had about a two to three second entirely vulnerable period that you were dismounting from that zipline. So that's something that is now counterbalanced here with the ability to shoot on the zipline. Granted, it is still from the hip, so you're not as accurate, but you can give some suppressing fire if needed. I'm really a big fan of some of the new contracts. The safe cracker contracts are pretty awesome. It gives you a decent yield of cash. I wish that we didn't sacrifice scavenging your contracts here in that regard, but at the same time, we might see those return at some point. I am a big fan of that champion's quest if you end up going on the win streak where you can end up getting the nuke in Warzone. 
that's pretty dang cool. But overall, coming back down to gameplay feel, it feels more like a battle royale with bigger stakes at different points. Looting's more RNG, which is inherently the BR way. You have to be a bit more tactical in your nature with those decisions on how you take rotations, how you end up using that buy station utility, all that kind of stuff. So I'm really liking the sort of feel that we have so far. Proximity chat, while well, proximity chat is known for being toxic, like some of the biggest highlights with games of proximity chat, are probably players being toxic and it still can be that way i've had some great times already with the random shenanigans with enemies and such in warzone 2 so i love that as an addition and a feature assimilation this is an interesting mechanic where this is going to be our bridge from likes to dislikes because it's cool if you're say outnumbered per se and you want to keep playing a little bit you can join another squad but at the same time it's quite literally legal teaming where you can use this feature so not quite sure where I stand on that one just yet, but moving over into the cons, some things that I definitely think need some improvement, there are criticisms for. Firstly, the zones. I think that the zones that we have are far too sticky. It seems like there's only about a dozen or so end zones where the last few iterations of Warzone have either been entirely randomized or there's so many set zones in rotation that you wouldn't notice any real overlap or repeats. This, I've gotten the same end zones at least half a dozen times now at this point where I notice, I'm like, Wait, we were just here like three games ago. Now that's something that I think will be ironed out in time. Another thing that I think will be ironed out is the looting. And I'm okay with the looting as we have it now to a degree. I'm not saying like this in terms of the backpacks or anything like that. But what I cannot stand and I'm sure that is massively annoying to you as well is that we don't really have any real way to easily access loot. And again, I don't mean that in the sort of loot bag, but I'm talking about how loot stacks on top of other stuff. That makes it to a degree entirely inaccessible. Whether or not you can't open bags up, it just won't let you. Or if you can't access the weapon underneath the piles of ammo that drop. It's that sort of pre-change war zone looting mechanic from way back in the day, but even worse somehow. Not to mention that sometimes it seems like loot goes into barriered areas way too often where you can't pick up weapons or items despite their icons being there. I also feel like loot kind of despawns insanely quickly. I mean, my squad has already had an instance or two where a teammate would be going to the gulag. They'd have to wait that entire duration because the gulag just wouldn't fill up. And then they'd have to fight with like one second before they'd be released for free. They'd win their gunfights and then they'd drop back. And by that point, some of their stuff would already despawn. Also, I just don't understand how the backpack expansions work where you get a medium or large backpack because if you had one or an enemy had one, they just won't show up in their loot where you can't take it off their body. So it just seemingly despawns and is lost for good after that player that had it is killed. Now, there's plenty of bugs also on top of that beyond just looting that we've talked about here on the channel already. One of which the biggest I think is that downed state skip where we talked about it yesterday, but there's a bug right now where if you come back from the gulag, if you are shot and downed, you will oftentimes just be entirely eliminated. Even if you have self revives or whatever the case, you just will not go into that down state. Instead, you'll just be killed entirely. That is a known bug that they are working on. So if you've noticed that, don't worry. It's not something that is going to be a constant thing going into Warzone's future, but right now that needs ironed out. The 2v2 Gulag right now is kind of hit or miss with me. I'd say that this is a con, but also maybe a pro, because on one hand, while I love that I can just mow through enemies, it's two free kills as opposed to just one. It's a nice little booster to those totals. On the other, I've already had so many different encounters where my teammates just absolutely throw our gulags. The one situation that I already had that tilted me the most was I killed an enemy and broke and fleshed another one with a deagle. So all my teammate had to do was quite literally land one singular shot to secure the win for both of us. But I watched in that death third person perspective as my teammate missed five shots on the enemy who was one shot and wasn't looking at him. Then he turned around and got one shot headshotted. So we both lost. So like, yeah, that's part of the game, but I'd much rather just rely on my skills to get back into the action than somebody else's. And I think that's why I like the 1v1 Gulag more. Now, beyond that, there's a ton of hitching, server lag, lobbies not filling up issues. That's got to get fixed out. We got to figure that out, Infinity Ward. I know it's going to be something that we do get fixed out, but I'm just disappointed that we even got that at launch here to begin with. Cash values, I think, again, are hit or miss. Some games, it feels like I've got a ton of cash. Others, I feel like I'm searching for ages just to get cash to get a teammate back. If we could get like a 50% increase to the cash for where we have it now, I think that that'd be a nice touch and incentivize a bit more utility play. And then finally, the infill plane. We're way too punched in in perspective here on that, where you can't really see what's below you in the map. So that's something that I hope that they sort of bring that perspective back, change the FOV, whatever the case is on that infill plane. And I think that it would make a way better experience for the early game and making where you want to land an easier choice. 
Now, before we move on to DMZ, I want to take a second and discuss today's sponsor with you, Apex Gaming PCs, a performance-based build company specializing in all your PC needs. Right now, they've got a Black Friday deal going on where Code Espresso can get you 15% off your next system. And if you're looking for an upgrade or gift of some kind for the holiday season, that deal will last until the end of the month and is the best deal that we've had since I've been partnered with them. You can check the link below to find some pre-spec systems that they've built out for the community here. But of course, you can customize them even further to any degree that you see fit. I'm personally looking forward to my system with them here, including a 4090 to keep the gameplay and video quality as pristine as possible. But if interested, links in the description below and use code ESPRESSO to take advantage of that massive holiday sale. But anyways, on to DMZ. Again, I'll say it, I jumped to judgment a bit too quickly a week or two ago when it was shown off. The feel of the mode is much better in my opinion when you actually play it versus watching it, or at least the initial offering that we saw here at that. But that said, it's still not perfect, but here's what I like. Number one, it's a way more chill mode for those that don't want to jump into Battle Royale and to explore Amazra. I thought that I heard Plunder would be coming in at some point for Warzone 2, though off the top of my head, can't remember if that was actually something that happened or if it is, when that will be coming. But I think that once you have that in rotation, perhaps all three on offer, it'll be a great selection for every player giving something for everybody. Now, one thing that I really like is that exploratory sandbox nature of DMZ. I really enjoy that you can go in, do what you want at your own pace, and surprisingly with some solid reasoning to do so. Honestly, I'm kind of liking the sort of faction missions that give some loot and rewards here, blueprints for various levels of missions completions across three different factions that you unlock. My only concern, we'll come back to this in a second, is how permanent are these challenges as in will we see more will these just be these static challenges we see for the rest of time we'll touch on that in a second but right now there's some question marks with that system but it's cool at its base now it's also really good for leveling up both xp for your overall rank but also for your weapons I'm not sure that if we'll do another amended video on the best ways to rank up your weapons. We just did one, so I don't think that I really want to beat a dead horse and offer up another one. But just know that seriously, if you need to rank up your weapons, you don't want to play Invasion because you just find you run from spawn to spawn and die. And it's just a sort of running simulator at that point. This is another very easy way to farm bot kills and rank up your weapons. I'm also enjoying the fact that things can carry over. And naturally, that's how it should be with the genre itself. But I mean, when you take a look at it, when you go into what you have on offer, you have different things like your armor satchels, your gas masks, your backpack size, that will all carry with you from what you exfil with and going into your next game. So if you find a durable gas mask, a large backpack, those will carry on if you successfully exfil and then go into your next game. Same thing with secondary weapons that you can add into your backpack. You can add certain keys as well to access locked areas of the map and other things like that streaks self revives it's all cool that it carries over here with you so honestly i like that to that degree but again as with all of that you have to realize there is risk management if you die with that stuff on your person it is gone now, there's a lot here that we could talk about in regards to cool little features that are like gameplay quirks and everything like that, but let's move on for the interest of time to some things that I don't quite like. Number one, it's pretty unforgiving for solo players. Right now, we only have trios. I'm really hoping that we do get something in the future that adds solos duos and quads but for right now being trios only it is unfortunate for those that don't quite necessarily have a squad to go in with especially with the fact that the m13b quest line can be really annoying as a solo player and again that's another thing that i don't quite like here i'm not a fan of genuine unlocks being in a mode that's technically a different game modern warfare 2's m13b season one weapon is only unlockable in the dmz mode where you have to kill the chemist and extract with his weapon blueprint and sure maybe that's an entirely publicity thing for dmz DMZ initially, that they want to drive as much traffic early on as possible, be like, hey, check out the mode, you'll like it, we promise, and then that's the end of it. But honestly, I just don't think that you should have to go into an entirely different game here. I think that if that continues on, that's going to spell some massive dissatisfaction in the future, more than there already is for this in this quest line that we have. Another thing that I'd like to see change and have some concerns with come down to extractions. Right now, the extraction points, there are very few of them around the map, each single map, and they're all static. Everybody shares that same singular extraction point, meaning that camping those extraction zones is an absolute real problem that people will face. And that's something that will hinder a lot of the gameplay experience for a lot of people. Either add in 
more extraction zones around the map or have it be something that's marked specifically for an individual player, giving some ability to get out of there without the zones being camped. And yes, this might not be an issue for you, but it absolutely is something that truly is something that many players are having problems with currently. And additionally, one thing we'll touch on here in just a second in terms of some future concerns is the lack of actual progression within DMZ. Right now, you can end up dropping in, looting up, extracting, and getting contraband weapons and stuff like that, but the only things that you can really work towards are additional insured weapon slots, and of course, those blueprints with those challenges and things like that in terms of the missions overall. But beyond that, there's really not a whole ton to work towards. You're not able to extract with things like cash to end up buying contraband weapons or something like that from specific factions on a rotation. There is no shop to be able to buy certain items that actually will credit it towards your account. Instead, you have very limited amounts to actually keep you long-term grinding out the mode. Beyond that, though, it is what it is. It's a sandbox mode here, and really, a lot of the gripes could come down to the ways that you end up just playing the mode. I think at that point, my concerns now turn to the future, because I'd be curious to see how DMZ is carried into the future. I'm curious if we'll see seasonal wipes. I'm curious if we'll see more contracts and challenges offered up, if there are more rewards, quest lines, in-game contracts and challenges beyond that high-level stuff that you choose before infilling, if there's any sort of genuine marketplace that we can buy and sell that will credit items to our accounts, because right now, exfilling with cash, it's kind of pointless. I mean, it's all based on contraband loot and such that you can exfil with, but if you were able to exfil with a ton of cash and buy camos outside of that you can use in DMZ, in Warzone, in multiplayer, I think that would make it way more worthwhile and offer up way more reasoning to grind out looting in the game. There's just a lot of questions that I have for it right now, but I think right now it's a solid blueprint for what the future may indeed hold. Overall, in terms of DMZ as well as Warzone 2, I'm pleasantly surprised with the season so far aside from the technical difficulties, which of course we cannot ignore. The crashing absolutely needs to be fixed out. I'll be blunt with you guys. I'm not even trying to brag or anything like that. My PC and my system is probably something that is close to, if not rivaling, some of the systems the game is built on. So when you have an absurdly overkill PC like this, and I'm crashing once every hour at least, we gotta get that fixed out, man. When the game is crashing on systems that are built to not have crashing issues like that, then you trickle it down to the just regular mainstream consoles where I've seen tons of crashing issues across Xbox and PlayStation. We gotta get those things sorted out. And yes, they will be. They're not just gonna be like, ah, gee, sorry guys, that sucks. We can't help you. It's gonna be fixed out, but it's just kind of annoying that we even have this in the first place. Like, I have zero idea how game dev works in that aspect foundationally but I'm definitely sure that it was probably an executive decision with Activision at the helm of that choice being like, nope, we're not changing the date of the release. We did that once with Caldera last year in season one. We're not doing it again, especially if bugs are gonna persist after that. So they just said ship it, but I mean, Right now, there's definitely issues that need to be ironed out. But again, beyond the technical issues, I'm pleasantly surprised with how the modes have turned out. I'm always a bit skeptical just because like, I feel like if you have no expectations at all, you don't set yourself up for any disappointment. That's kind of like the entire basis of like my life philosophy is maybe depressing as that may sound. Just go in with the it is what it is mentality. And for me, when I did that with this, I'm enjoying it so far. Could it be a matter of, well, this is perhaps the honeymoon phase? Maybe, so we'll see where we're at in a few weeks time. But for now, I'm okay with what we've got. I'm looking forward to seeing where we go in the coming weeks to months. So for now, that's where we're at here at this. If I were to give this a rating, I'd say maybe a solid seven. As you guys know with prior ratings, 10 is absolutely unobtainable. That means something's perfect. I don't think anything in life is perfect. There's always room for improvement, whether that be personally with things you're working on in your life or with things like games like this. Five is probably that threshold for me where I'm just like, yeah, not really worth it to play. But seven, I think is pretty solid. Again, room for improvement, but a solid base foundationally and I'm enjoying myself so far, maybe 7.5. But anyways, that's where I'm at here at this. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Do you guys agree, disagree? What are the case? Feel free to let me know. Again, it's all entirely subjective. So if you don't share the same view as somebody else in the comments, let's be civil. Let's be cool with each other. We're all here just to have a good time. So let me know your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ here going forward. We've got a lot upcoming still. So make sure you're here on the channel for all of it. For now though, thanks so much for watching. Honestly, Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.